Lebanon is a tiny country of about four and a half million people in the Middle East. It's bordered by Syria to the north and to the east and by Israel to the south. And its unique position sort of makes it a cultural and ethnic crossroads for the Middle East. It was originally inhabited by the Phoenicians and then over the centuries it was conquered and reconquered by the Romans and by the Assyrians and by the Ottoman Turks and then more recently by the French. The result is that it's this really interesting mishmash of different cultures. The place we're going to right now is called Saj Bakery that's run by these two brothers, Mel and Charlie, and they serve traditional shawarmas, za'atar, and flat bread cooked on this giant oval pan that's also called a Saj. We're headed there right now, and I can't wait to try some of this Lebanese food. I would definitely like a shawarma sandwich with beef and chicken. Half and half? Yeah. Can I do that? I want to try the, uh, the menaouche. Menaish, Zata, or cheese with sujut. Cheese with sujut. Mm -hmm. I would also like the saj bread. Saj bread. Can I have that with cheese and za'atar? You can have it with cheese and za'atar. You think I should have or anything else you recommend? Number three, okay. it's labne, zata, and veggies. Labne is the thick yogurt. That's the, oh, that's yogurt. Okay, we'll try that too. This is gonna be so much food. Tell me the story about the mural on the wall. Well, that, yes. Yeah. So obviously, we're all about authenticity. Uh -huh. So what we did there, our goal was to show how the Saj bread started. Back in the day, like thousands of years ago, up in the mountains of Lebanon. So that's exactly what there is. A man and his wife, she's making the bread, spreading it out, and he's putting it on that Saj, which is like that piece of metal, to make it thin and cook it. Charlie, how long have you been, been cooking? Since 12 years old. Since you were 12? And how did I you- I used to help my, my dad used to be a butcher. Oh, your dad was a butcher? Go help him. After college, I went to culinary school. Oh, you went to you went to culinary school. Six years. Oh, that's awesome. Did your mom and dad both cook, or was it mostly your dad? Well, or your my mom, mom cook or? absolutely all the Mediterranean people. They everybody cook at home. Okay. Mom is always cook at home. So like every time you come home, every every night, every day, you have, we have food at, at the table. Is she a good cook? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, she's great. Yeah. She help us here sometimes. She does. Isn't it? Isn't it the hummus and the tabbouleh? Hummus sometimes she did. She make it. The tabbouleh also she make it. And do you feel, I mean, have you noticed that there's a, that there's a, a response from from the Lebanese community to, that they that this is something? Oh yeah, most of the customers feel like in their bear, in, like they feel in Lebanon when they come here. This is the Saj bread that we saw beautifully cooked on the giant hot. Massage. And then inside we have the za'atar, which is a spice mixture that's primarily thyme. And then we also have some of this cheese, a salty white cheese that is also partially sheep's milk. It's just very simple, very large flat piece of bread filled with slightly pleasantly chewy white cheese, almost like a cheese curd. If you've ever had a cheese curd, it has that little squeak. And then you've got this floral herbal mixture that is very, it's a very heavy thyme flavor, but then you also get a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of sesame. Think of it as a Middle Eastern quesadilla or something like that. We have the shawarma. So now the shawarma, as you saw, is essentially layered meat on a spit. The fat and all the delicious drippings from the meat kind of trickle down. All that good stuff gets down on the vegetables too, and it makes it taste really good. This chicken shawarma is, is A plus. You get a lot of uh, lemon, a vague kind of orange hint in the chicken, which is really, really nice. And then the pickles offset that fatty chicken. And then the yogurt kind of seeps through the whole thing and kind of mixes it. It kind of, it kind of brings it all together. It kind of holds all of the different ingredients and flavors together. And then you have this nice lavash-like flatbread. Very soft, very pliant, but kind of swaddling all the ingredients together like a little baby that I then put in my mouth. 
invite its head off. I heard a couple of words being bandied about, menaush and menaish, and I learned that menaish is plural, more than one menaush, which is singular. So here I have, and I am about to enjoy my menaush. And this is with uh, the cheese, the white cheese, that is mixed with a sheep milk cheese and also sujuk, which is a cured spice Middle Eastern sausage. I don't know if it's specifically Lebanese. This looks like a pepperoni pizza. Let's just not, let's not fool ourselves as to what this looks like. Uh, I'm sure it tastes different though. The white cheese, it's very salty. It's saltier than your normal cheese than you might expect. And then on top of it is the sujuk. The spices remind me a little bit of the shawarma spices. All in all, it makes a pretty damn good Lebanese pizza. Let's move on to our final menaish, zatar and lebna that is half and half, and then it is covered in vegetables. It's covered in a mixture of black olives, cucumbers, tomatoes, fresh mint, and it's all on that beautiful uh, fresh flatbread. And with also with the zatar spice mixture, the flatbread is very well made and, and delicious. The consistency of the yogurt of the lebna is almost bordering on very tart, I think that reacts nicely with the strongly herbal uh, sesame and thyme of the za'atar. This is lovely as well. I'd like to thank you all for tuning into this episode of Dining on a Dime from Saj Bakery in Granada Hills. If you'd like to watch more, please click here. It literally is not just one person, one idea. It's literally a bunch of people coming together.